Welcome to SPS Art and Photos. Art rules everything around this podcast, where it's personal, not business. Hi, and welcome to SPS Art and Photos. Art rules everything around me, where it's personal, not business. So let's get into it. Podcast number four. Again, last podcast I just I just released was on Mieko. That was encompassing Mako's art, one piece of art, how we uh, captured the gold. Again, if you didn't catch that, go back and look at that. That's awesome. Again, like, subscribe, share. I need more art, more people, more eyeballs on what's happening here with us and these learning podcasts. I got 40 years experience doing this at least. And I think it's just time for me to start talking to more people and helping more artists on a broader level and a broader scale. And I think doing these videos, just showing what other artists are doing and some of the tips and tricks that we can do and how we connect. So here we go. Last one, we talked about Mieko. Mieko has a website, a Shopify site with us. Um, same with Nathan Gibbs. Nathan Gibbs has an amazing website with us. I'm going to put that in the link below. You can go check out all of his other art. Um, Nathan, I've known for about 15, 16 years. I met him after my first artist I started working with, Sean Dietrich, which that's going to be the next podcast. So again, this is podcast number four. We're talking about Nathan Gibbs art, and we're going to talk about one piece of art. And he's got, I think, seven pieces of art here. Oh, this is in the way. Sorry about that. I didn't see the movie yet. I heard it was good. Anyways, so, so, Nathan. So, I met him at a Surfrider event, uh, and he was live painting and just a super nice guy. Uh, I love Nathan. Super chill. Um, again, he finally came down and, and said, hey, look, I see this cruise scanner that you got. You're doing some cool textured stuff. And texture, there's two ways to create texture. You can do it through uh, image scanning, 3D scanning on a Metis or a cruise. We have a cruise. Um, we do not have the 3D um, app on that. Ours was uh, ours is an older cruise. It's still the same quality scan, but I just don't have that software on it. But how we achieve it is different. We do it through Photoshop. And I'm going to have to say this. If I had the scanner that had the 3D, which right now it's about $135,000 to $150,000 to upgrade the scanner I have to get that on there to get the full, you know, complement LED, everything. I would still do the Photoshop version probably more than the textured. Um, a lot of this textured that art that people do, it's it's not textured enough. So there are some artists that are gearing their art to do textured work. They're doing a lot of a lot of texture and they're having it scanned on a Metis or a Cruise for texture. So what we do is we go into the art like this, this is the art, this is the original behind me. It's fairly large, can't get the whole thing on here, but um, if you go to his website, you'll be able to see it. I'm gonna show you some smaller versions of it of what we did and what we accomplished and then what me and Nathan kind of came up with. We just curated this one. You wanted to see this art on different styles and different ways. So here we go. I'm gonna go over all the pieces first. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Photoshop and go over all of that at one time because it's a lot to unpack, but I want to get through it. I'm going to go through it fairly fast. I'm going to try to not talk too fast. I'm going to try to slow down and just be precise so everybody knows what we're working with and what we're dealing with here. So first we get the scan. From the scan, um, we went in there, and like I said, I'll show you that on the next round. So from the scan, we can pretty much do anything. So this is one of my favorite styles of print. Um, this is hemp. So hemp is amazing. This print's on the Swiss Q print. Um, again, the color's going to be off on the video here. It's not going to be perfect because it, it's not calibrated and all that good stuff. But what I do love is I love hemp. The nice thick sheet. This is from Gamund. I have this on our facts page. We're the only shop that's really stocking this. It's 100% hemp. There's a million reasons why we should be printing more on hemp. So we did the nice border. So when you go to frame this, it's already got the border and you don't have to pay for the mat if you want to because the minute you put, add a mat, price goes up and there you go. So that's going to be our hemp print. Of course, he can do that on any print he wants. Of course, he can, he can do it on a mat. He can do it on smooth fine art. Fine art, but I think Nathan, you know, us being, you know, in the water a lot. I, I shoot the water a lot. Um, uh, we met at Surfrider because we believe in protecting the oceans. I work with a lot of activism and artivism people, Pangea Seed, and other people. I absolutely love that art. Should you know make people think, and art should be there to help people see things from a different point of view and perspective, right? So this is olive oil. 
So a lot of people are like, well, how do I do hollow foil with this type of work? Well, you can, and it looks pretty amazing. I love it. So Nathan really wanted to highlight on these, on the yellow, which is, I think we caught that. And you can see there's intermittent stuff going on here. Um, pretty amazing. I love this. Hollow foil is awesome. And then we're going to go right into wood. So wood, we did nothing. Made sense. So this is with the wood. We use uh, FSC certified maple. Uh, and it's a uh, cabinet grade. So it's really nice. So the wood is uh, the supernatural. You're going to see the drain, the sty, the less white. So there is no white on this one in the background or anything. So we just left it as is natural wood. And then again, I'm going through these pretty fast. I don't think we need to stop and talk. I think we know what wood is. I think we know what everything is. I'm going to talk more in the Photoshop files. So canvas. So this is our gallery canvas. This has got a matte finish on it, black edge matte. Noah does a great job at wrapping these canvases. Look at that edge. Good job, Noah. I trained Noah how to do this. Noah's 18, going on 19. Uh, he's never worked in the printing industry. He frames and uh, does all this stuff where he does it better than me. Thank you, Noah. <laughs> Thanks for releasing me from that job. Um, so this is matte finish. Again, canvas. This is our gallery canvas, the gallery thickness. Uh, this is going to be thicker. It's going to be uh, breathing colors live canvas we use and then we sprayed it with the mat so it's museum grade mat museum grade everything museum thickness this is our highest end canvas you can put a floating frame around it if you wanted to um beautiful piece we do have another canvas that we're selling that is thinner and let me be careful with this and let me I don't want to ruin these are his samples so we don't want to ruin the samples Again, we're going to go right into a frame print so here's the back um this has this is on Vibrance Matte, and there is no matte in here. That's just us using the paper as the matte. So again, thank you, Noah. I'm gonna set that right there on the backdrop, very lightly against the original, very lightly. And then here is brush metal. So again, brush metal, this is what it looks like. Here's the front. So the brush metal, again, you start, start to see it. We really played a lot with the different textures I'm showing you on the light there. So when you look at a face on, it looks like that. But he really wanted to call attention to this yellow. So what we did in there, we left no white. So there's white intermittent throughout this whole piece, except for on the, on the yellow parts that you see here. There is no white. So you can see how that brush metal really shines through. So again, brush metal ready to hang. Um, there's no white, very little white in the sky with a 35% there and then an intermittent gloss. So you can see the way the gloss changes. Best viewed when you guys come in the office. Really nice piece. Again, let me set this down quite nicely. And then I got two more pieces to show you. This is his sample set. He paid for the sample set. He got 25% off the full sample set. This is the acrylic. So we put a PVC backer on it. Again, this is really aggressive tape that can come off. So this is a side view. We leave this on. This is um, an acrylic pass so you can see as I peel it off on how nice it is. It's kind of satisfying, right? To peel it off. And then we'll actually put masking tape on this to cover it back up later. But there you go. So acrylic print, beautiful. I love acrylic. Acrylic is really classic, but man, really hits those colors really hard. I like acrylic on the Swiss Q print, not on the Canon. Uh, it just doesn't do a good job. There are two ways to do acrylic. So you can print direct like us, or you can print on a, on a piece of paper and then laminate it to the acrylic. Um, and then keep uh, making mistakes on that, keep doing that over and over again, and you're just gonna wanna do how we do it. Um, it's very difficult. Um, when you do the lamination process, you have to have a clear laminate that goes on the photo or anything. If a piece of dust gets anywhere in between anything, you're done. This, we don't ruin any. I don't, I have never ruined an acrylic piece. I mean, I, I've ruined one, but not because of dust. It's because I printed the wrong thing the wrong way, but we don't ruin these. They're amazing. Acrylic. That was really satisfying to see the peel come off. Again, let me set this down really nice here. And then the last 
the last we have here, and then we're going to jump right into the Photoshop. Nathan, I really appreciate you letting me show everybody this. I really appreciate you uh, doing this with us and trusting me and trusting us. Um, all of this is – Nathan hasn't even seen any of these. So th he hasn't seen them yet. So he'll see them before I release this video. But the cool thing is the opportunity is there. Like this is a sample set. This is a learning tool for the artist and for me to see how things are working. I'm learning new things every day. My mind is open to learn. I am not set in my ways. I am not done learning. I will never stop learning. I will always try my best to do cool things and new things, period. I'm never going to stop trying to learn to do things better, period. That being said, here's why I bought the Swiss Q print. So this is the most expensive thing we do um, right now. It's $90 a square foot. This is a textured piece. Um, so I'm going to show you in the Photoshop files what we did. I'm going to talk about this a little bit. Let me scoot out of the way a little bit again. So you can see that there's intermittent gloss in here. So this is, again, this is done on brush metal. So on the brush metal, we've left very little light and there's no texture in the sky. So when you touch it, the texture is only on the edges. And then the texture is higher on certain parts. So when you go in here, you can see the riverbed all along the riverbed here. This area and this area here is higher, and so are the trees. So you can see all the texture there in the light. And then we have a special way of doing the, the varnish. So the varnish is high on the yellow and high on the yellow. And then what we did is we took all the boulders and made the boulders have the highest parts on it. So all of it kind of makes sense, right? So this is the most expensive thing we do. It's $90 a square foot, whether it's on canvas, brush metal, or wood. I just charged $90 a square foot. The cost should be higher based on what it is. Um, we'll talk about that later. Right now, it's $90 a square foot plus the time, effort, energy to go separate all this. And I'll show you why. This is the most difficult thing we do. We're in Photoshop. We have to figure out the levels. We got to figure out different different ways that we want to do it. We're getting pretty good at it. We're still learning. We learned a lot from this one too. And I'm going to talk about two I did for Camila Derrico. I'm going to definitely do a podcast on that and, and talk about two of the ones we did for her and what she's working on. Because I think the textured is where it's at. I think textured is going to be uh, amazing. There's only there's only a few handful of artists in the United States that I know of that are doing this. Um, I'm not going to tell you uh, on the videos who I'm doing because I'm not promoting those people because I'm promoting the artists I work with. So, but if we talk on the side, I can share with you who um, who's doing this really well and who you can take a look at and see how they're doing it. So, ask me later, DM me, email me, whatever. But check out all that cool texture. Look at all that cool texture. Look at all that cool texture. I absolutely love this piece. I love this piece. I learned a lot. Every time I learn something, I go back to my clients and I continue to share and I continue to work on other clients and on older jobs. We can kind of go back and tweak things. Um, and this is all put away. Um, so that's that's everything. So we unwrapped and unpacked and talked about a lot of different pieces of art. Let me get front and center here again, get my microphone situated. What I'm going to do... So I've got a bunch of Photoshop files open and look, I'm not the Photoshop expert. I know enough to be dangerous, but what I do know is that Paul does a great job. Paul is the one that does all the Photoshop work with us. Um, and me and him, we sit down and we curate together. So we talk to the client, then the client sends an email, then we curate these things together. So it's a good process. So let me go and share screen window Photoshop. So here we go. This is the hall of foil. And I'm going to collapse these when we're done talking about them. So everything down on this left side, all of these layers, all those layers, that's me and Paul going in there. So I just wanted you to see what the art looked like. And then I'm going to turn this off and you can start to see how Paul did everything one by one in the layers. So there's a reason we did this and I'm going to show you the reason. So there's all the layers again. <laughs> so I'll just turn this back on. So there it is. So this is our hollow foil. So our hollow foil, I'm going to turn these off. So there's our white. So if I grab the hollow foil, 
here's our white. So we only put light in the sky and in the water. And then you can see we left all this, all this exposed right here. We left all this exposed. And it's all intermittent. It's based on our color in the channels. And then here is our semi-gloss. So again, in the dark areas, he wanted to call attention to the yellow. So again, in the yellow, you will notice that it is very dark here in the Photoshop file. So this is very dark. So the darker it is, the more gloss there is there. And then when we go to the white, you will see that there is no white in this area. So this is devoid of white. So he's going to get the full blast of the yellow and the varnished to get that full blast of color. So that's where we're at. This is just time, effort, and energy on our part, learning all these things. I, again, I'm still learning. I'm still, still finding things out, especially when it comes to hollow foil, when it comes to textured. So I'm going to collapse this. Don't save. It doesn't matter. Save the ideas are just extra. So I want to go into the brush metal next. So again, same concept, right? So, but now Paul has all these separated, right? So once we have all these separations, we can, we can put gloss, texture, we can do everything we want with them. So we're going to come over here. This is our white. So we have a lot of white going on here because we really want this area of light back here. There's not a lot of white. So again, here's the brush metal. So in this area, we have a little bit of light, white and a little bit of varnish. But you can see there's a lot of white here in this area here. So we have a lot of white in these areas. And when we do that, it has different effects. So again, on the yellow here and the yellow here, we really wanted to get and accentuate, set this down nicely. We really wanted to accentuate certain areas. So that's our white. And then here is our drop gloss. And you can see that the drop gloss is intermittent because the art is intermittent. So he's, we're using the gloss based on, on strokes. You can see all, it's picking up these little varnish strokes. It's picking up all this stuff. So the scanner is pretty amazing, picks up everything. And so that's why we get like, these really intermittent, these areas here show up kind of textured on the actual finished print. These are surprises to us. We don't know until we see, oh, that's cool. And so when another artist comes in that does this, I can say, hey, when we do that, you're gonna get some texture there. Um, it's just because we're learning. We're doing hundreds of pieces of art a week. So again, there's your drop gloss and then there's your white combined. So that's them combined. So again, that white area, lots of white going on, but not a lot here. And then that way, we the white is getting the color to stay too fairly well. And we're letting those other colors like the yellows in this area that you have a lot of yellow and you have a lot of yellow. And in these highlights, you have a lot of greens in these highlights here. So again, I hope you guys are learning something. I hope I'm not going too fast. If you guys have any questions, throw them in the link. Talk to me. I want to know what you guys are thinking. I want to know what you guys want to hear. So here we go. This is the first time I'm sharing this on uh on camera this is the first time i'm sharing this with anybody because i thought it was an opportunity for us to teach people nathan doesn't mind some people don't want to show their tricks um but i don't really care so much because you a you got to have a swiss key print b you've got to know how to use a photoshop and you got to know how to do the layers on the swiss key print it's it's not easy so we're printing um three textured layers two of the texture layers are printing twice. So you print texture one once, texture two twice, texture three twice. And underneath that, we have other layers underneath it. So we have seven layers there, two layers of white and two layers of varnish and a layer of color. So it's a lot. Um, it's difficult in, for my brain because I'm the one doing these. When I get on the press, I can't have anyone talk to me because it's very difficult. So let's look at these. So. Here's the color file. And on this, that's our white. So we want everything white. And we're leaving the brush metal exposed on the top. So you guys saw that, right? So the top is exposed to the brush metal. There's our drop gloss. So here, let me gently pull this one back out. So again, there's no texture up here. 
And those dark areas, when you look at this dark area right here, and let me get up on it. So this dark area, that's the yellow. That's the light. That's where we pulled. So these areas right here, those are all the yellows. That's really where you wanted to pull the color and pull everything from. And you can see the yellows here. And you could definitely see that there's no uh, texture in the sky because I really wanted the shine and the sheen with the varnish and the brushed metal to pop. And we lay that 25% uh, white down. It gives it like a pearlescent finish. I Again, brushed metal is my favorite thing to print on here. Texture is my next favorite thing. I love hollow foils. Don't get me wrong. But I, I love brushed metal because it's such a great medium and it's ready to hang. You put it on a wall, it's ready to hang. But you get a lot of really cool, unique things out of this. And it really does create um, a limited edition piece that is um, going to be last forever. These prints will last a lifetime, if not longer. Um, and I think they'll become more valuable over time. So if you guys want to unpack this with me, this is our last thing we're talking about. And then we're done. Um, Again, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and going through this. So here is, I'm going to go back into the RGB. Again, I know enough in Photoshop to be dangerous. So here's the original. And again, so Paul called out all these. That's the foreground. So that's so where we got our white here. So this is our white. That's our white, right? There's our drop gloss. There's our drop gloss. The drop gloss we took from one of the channels with made the yellow and we tweaked it a little bit. So here's here's our ground. There's our water. And then here's our sky. And then here's a right tree, left tree. So the right tree and the left tree, you'll understand when I show you this other one, I show you the textures. That that texture itself is is there to build up everything else so when you look there's your texture so that's texture one so this is a hundred percent so there's three levels so it goes up three times so that way right here the riverbank and the rocks are the highest and the foreground is the highest and the trees are the highest because it makes sense and then we started to drop back the other areas there's no texture here and these, there wasn't much between these. I did learn that there wasn't much difference between these two, but there was a lot of difference and noticeable difference between this and this. So between these two areas, again, we could pull that up and you can see that area is here. You can see that, that there is a definite difference and these rocks all have texture. So this is the best type of art to do texture with. A lot of different colors, a lot of different contrasts and tones to get us to get these tones going. So. The boulders have the highest, so you can see this on the boulder, it's super high. And then you can see here on the river's edge, how we, it's different from this to the foreground, how these are, these are taller. And you can see that this is in the background where these are higher. So and this is the smallest. So this is the thinnest background here. So really love texture. Texture is always something that we're learning more about. And again, let me set that down and we're done. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, I don't want to take up any more time. So again, that was Nathan Gibbs. We unpacked a lot. Like, share, comment. Um, I love feedback. Uh, I thrive on feedback because it's important for us to 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 hear like, oh, you guys like that? Or, oh, okay, what do you want me to slow down on? What do you want to focus on? And again, I hate this microphone right here. I'm trying to get the microphone in the best position for us to talk. So again, all these opportunities are for one piece of art. So to do the texture, the texture is the hardest. So that took Paul about three to four hours of Photoshop time of going in there and separating everything out. And we kind of learned as we went. So now when we see jobs like that again, or opportunities like that again, we know how long the Photoshop file takes. It's $120 minimum just to texturize the file. Then on top of that, you have your Photoshop. So at $65 an hour, we charged Nathan $65 an hour and we gave him an hour for free. So, and off his sample set, he got a fat discount off it. We'll do that with all you guys. I really want everybody to start doing these things so they can see how their art relates to different stuff. But just start with one. Me and Nathan have been working for a while. We just started with one piece and then we, we really sat down and figured out, okay, you know, what can I offer from this piece and what's going to translate well? I think we did a good job. I hope you guys liked it. Um, shout out to Ron White. 
bad bad art club. I love uh, Ron is all my he's my he's my t shirt guy. I, I wear his t shirts on all all of my podcasts. Ron is one of my best friends. Ron did my logos. Uh, Ron did the art rules everything around me. He does my personal logos. He's done my Photoshop work. He's done uh, a curate colors and everything for us. Every logo that we've ever done, everything for my company, Ron White's done for us. I'm definitely going to always put Ron's information in in, in our podcast. Uh, I love him like a brother. Um, again, the art community is great. I, I really appreciate this opportunity to share these things with you guys. I have nothing but love and gratitude for what I do. Um, it doesn't feel like a job to me. This is something I'm passionate about. Uh, helping people i'm passionate about that so art and helping people i'm not that's, that's my pleasure I, it's really what i enjoy doing i love doing that again i hope you got something out of this today um so let's sign off we're done all right stay tuned for the next one the next one is going to be sean dietrich and then from there we're going to jump into uh two pieces with camila derrico i'm not sure if i'm gonna be able to share them yet because they're not live but then i'm going to start interviewing some artists and start going over a Shopify. We're gonna we're gonna do a Shopify, but I need Chantel to be on there and Ferdy. So we're all gonna be on there together. We're gonna talk about art, artists, and how to connect with us. And then uh, that will also encompass shipping and all the other things that everyone has issues with. All right. Again, like, share, comment. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Have a great day.